Time now for Honda starting goalies in goal for the Chicago Blackhawks. It's 28-year-old Corey Crawford who leads the NHL with 17 wins. He allowed one goal in each of his last three starts. For the Dallas Stars, 30-year-old Harry Littman, winless in his last four starts. His value to the Stars underscored. He missed five games earlier this season. The Stars lost four of them. Dallas trying to battle back in that wild card chase. While Joel Quindle's Chicago Blackhawks improbably look even better than when they won the Stanley Cup. Gord, that's good cat management, excellent scouting, consistent coaching message, and brilliant young leadership. Stars in their road whites, and Alex Chazon fires that down to the Chicago zone. Johnny Oduya back for it, and his pass knocked down by Chase on the bouncing puck, picked up by Patrick Sharp. And the bouncing puck back down to the star zone. Scooped up by Jonathan Taves. Taves leading there for Marion Hosa. Eight goals in the last seven games against Dallas for Hosa. Taves has six in his last six. The centering pass for Patrick Sharp. And the puck rolls by Johnny Oduya. And back down to the Hawks' blue line. So many players for both these teams on the bubble to make Olympic teams, including Oduya, who's in the mix for Team Sweden. Boy, is their defense going to be mobile, smart, and really good with the puck. Even if he does go to Sochi, it won't be as good as his international experience during the lockout when he played for the Flying Farangs in Bangkok, Thailand and won the Thai League title. The trophy, by the way, has not been recovered. <laughs> Across the line is Patrick Kane, the NHL's Player of the Month for November. That centering pass bounces down in front. Intercepted by Brendan Dillon, who moves it ahead quickly. And here come the Dallas Stars on a break. Roussel in shoots, and Antoine Roussel shot blocked by Brent Seabrook. Seabrook, a member of Team Canada in the 2010 games in Vancouver, thought to be a long shot to make the 2014 Canadian team. And Trevor Daly back with it. The Stars minus defenseman Stefan Robida, who suffered a gruesome broken leg in two places against Chicago last Friday. Rich Peverly in, fans on the shot. And Peverly battles down low with Nick Letty. Ben Smith, who scored that shootout winner for Chicago on Friday night, clips it down to the Dallas zone. He was the 11th shooter for Chicago, said he looked to his left and all the other forwards had gone. Peverly to Goligoski. Alex Goligoski pulls it back in front. Marcus Kruger is up for Chicago, and back come the Hawks. This fourth line of Kruger, Bullock, and Smith has been terrific for Chicago, especially on that seven-game road trip. Nick Jomerson turns the puck over to Eric Cole, the fourth line on now for Dallas, and Letty fires that away. Eric Cole struggling to find his way. Two goals in 25 games to start the season. Andrew Shaw had to Chris for Stieg. That bounces away. And played back up the ice by Sergei Gonchar. Hawks have not allowed a goal in the first five minutes of a game yet this year. Gonchar to Cole. He chips that back down to the Hawks zone. Galmerson throws out a hit. Picked off by Jamie Benn. In he comes. Benn with a chance. Hits it right across. Eakin with a drive. Tony Eakin turned away by Corey Crawford. And he pounces on the rebound. And Crawford in there to give Jamie Benn a shot after the late black. Well, they know how important Jamie Benn is to the Dallas Stars, especially without Tyler Sagan. Here's an example of how good Jamie Benn is. In a confined area, takes the puck off the wall, walks to the front of the net, distributes the puck over to Cody Eakin. He just can't finish against Corey Crawford, who does a great job pushing off from his right to his left and making himself look large. Jamie Benn is just outstanding, Gord. There's another example of it. And if you make mistakes against him, he's going to stick it to the back of the net. Gordon, I don't know if you can see it from upstairs, but from down here, the one thing about the Dallas Stars, every team has a characteristic that's a, that is a strength. For the Dallas Stars, it's their speed and their counterattack. Phenomenal. New owner, new GM, new head coach for the Dallas Stars all in the last 12 months. The GM is Jim Mill, along with the Detroit Red Wings, the coach is Lindy Ruff, longer with the Buffalo Sabres. Here's Ben back in front, shoots Crawford the save on him. And Ben back with it to Chason. Alex Chason, who scored nine goals in his first ten career NHL games, going back to last season. The old coach of Boston University, Jack Park, is going to be happy with that. Jack just retired, David Quinn's taking over. 
Jason was a real good player. He's going to be with Terry's for a long time. Went to the Northwood School, Gordon Lake Class in New York. Hey, hey, hey. Mike Richter, Tony Granado, some of the alumni from there. Chris Terrian, former Dallas star. Now Roussel fires it down to the hot zone. Seabrook to Keith. Quickly ahead for Sharp, trying to find teams. That's knocked away and flipped out by Dallas. Stars have won six of the last seven on the road and feel like they deserve a better fate at home where they've just been snake bitten to score goals, especially on the power play. Dallas has one power play goal in 37 attempts at home so far this season. Well, how about their last game? Ilya Brzgalov, before he got hurt, was outstanding. Made 28 out of 29 saves to keep Edmonton in and then do the two making sure they came and do a good job. And now Patrick Kane streaking in and he draws a penalty. From the Dallas Stars, it'll be Brendan Dillon who goes off, and the Hawks will get the first power play of the game, four minutes and 18 seconds in. The speed of Patrick Kane causes this penalty for Brendan Dillon. He doesn't like it, but he's going to remember that Patrick Kane's a star. He loses body position. He comes and hooks into the stick, so Kane can never make a play on the puck. Zero tolerance league. You go to the box for that. Dallas shorthanded, Lindy Ruff doesn't like it. This power play brought to you by Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey. And Kane out there with seven power play goals on the year. Number two in the league, Alex Ovechkin. Duncan Keith sets it up. Shaw standing in front. Sharp working the back end as well. Keith with a shot that struck a leg in front. And team settles things down for Shaw. Who's behind the goal? Goligoski fishes that out. And feeds ahead to Ryan Garvin, who scored twice in that game against Edmonton. For Goligoski, shorthanded. What a move by Goligoski. Feeds it back in front. And that puck is slipped just wide by Sean Horkoff, shorthanded. Well, I don't know how he missed that one. He's going to come off the ice not feeling real happy about that wide open net. Team drops for Taze, but that drop pass puts Shaw offside at the Dallas line. Alex Goligoski at the University of Minnesota, a former Pittsburgh Penguin who came over to trade for James Neal. Does a great job starting this whole thing. Coming out of his own zone through the middle of the ice. Garbutt's got tremendous speed. Had six shots against Edmonton the other day. There's Goligoski jumping in, spin a ram a move, cross ice feed. Oh, Horkoff's got to score there, Gord. Got to score there. And that's a familiar refrain for Dallas, Pierre. A chance to grab the lead, a chance to score a big short-handed goal. And there's the open net. Now Hosen sets it up for Letty. Cross he goes to Seabrook. Back to Letty. Nick Letty. Across the first team with a shot. He hammered that high. And now Seabrook back with it. Back down to Hosa. To Brandon Saad. Hosa looks for Seabrook. Lots of traffic in front. Here's Hosa back with it. Finds Seabrook. Has room. Goes across to Letty. Letty winds and fires. Left in the save. Rebound. Loose his front. And Saad trying to reach it. Here's Letty back on it. He finds Seabrook. Back across to Letty. Cross ice, he goes. Hosa with a shot glove by Kerry Lettman as Hosa didn't get all of that. No, I didn't, but if you're a Chicago Blackhawk fan, player, or coach, you're going to be happy with the puck movement and the decision making. Good puck movement, excellent decision making, just a little bit of bad luck for Marion Hosa, who couldn't tee that one timer up. But what's becoming a story right now for Dallas, their speed, their counter attack work, and Kari Lettman in goal. Off the face-off win, Goligoski pounds that off the boards and down the ice. 30 seconds to go, and the penalty for Brendan Dillon of Dallas. Sharp snaps that pass ahead for Taves, and Lettman forced to play it. Put that high in the equipment of Goligoski, who had to handle that quickly. And he finds Antoine Roussel. A French player from France. Like Philip Bozon. Yeah, yeah. Not French-Canadian, but... France, France. But he played for Chicoutimi, which is in the province of Quebec. Moved over with his family when he was 16 years of age. Patrick Kane across the line to Taze. That pass deflected away as Dylan steps out, and Duncan Keith had to hustle back quickly. Here, Joel Quindle telling us this morning that maybe one of the keys to Duncan Keith's resurgent play, he's playing about two and a half minutes less a game than he did three years ago. No oh, else is doing that in Boston. He's playing very well. Big guy named Chara. Yeah. Less is more, man. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. Now, when you're 6'9", more is more. Smith back to Keith. He was the NHL's minutes play leader for three consecutive seasons. Kruger down to Smith. Heels off Jamie Benn. Throws it down there to Kruger. Back to Brandon Bullock. And Kruger to Bullock with a shot that was off a leg. Up and out of play. 
No score of the opening period. You're watching the NHL on NBCSN from Chicago. Over 12 million people have watched the Premier League on NBC Sports, and the action continues tomorrow at 2 Eastern with a matchup between Manchester United and Everton. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern on NBCSN. And by the way, Wayne Rooney's old team, Everton, higher up in the standings right now. What, what's your boy Rooney done? Manchester United struggling a bit. Okay. Climbing, nice. climbing. Okay. Eric Cole flips that down, finds... Valerie Nachushkin, the hulking Dallas rookie, 18-year-old, was the KHL Rookie of the Year last year. Same hometown as one of his teammates, Sergey Gonchar. How'd that work out so well? Hell yeah, this. Yes. Let's have to fuck it up over the glass and out of play. Let's go inside the glass, presented by Capital One with Pierre Maguire. Talk about speed for the Dallas Stars and their ability to generate off the rush. Lord, here's some really good examples. Antoine Roussel, you were talking about him before. Rich Peverly moves the puck to Alice Goligoski. Everything's in free fall. How about Jamie Benn? Off the boards in a confined area. That's escapability. That's hockey. And that's a testament to the Dallas Stars and the way Lindy Ruff coaches. Everything's about speed. And here they come again. A quick shot taken there by Dustin Jeffrey. And that's stopped by Corey Crawford. And if you don't manage the puck, and Brent Seabrook talked about it before the game started, they're going to turn it up on you big time, Dallas. And that's the way Lindy coached in Buffalo and it worked for him. Is a turnover, and then Dustin Jeffrey, who came over from the Pittsburgh Penguins on waivers, puts it right on goal. Dustin Jeffrey was a great junior player for Sault Ste. Marie in the Ontario Hockey League. He's getting a chance to play a little bit more now and having fun doing it. Back of the line is Goligoski. Throws that down to Jeffrey. For Ray Whitney, the veteran at age 41. And now fired back down the ice by Keith as he finds Bullock. Kruger shovels out ahead and it bounces back down to Kevin Connaughton playing in his second National Hockey League game. A turnover to Smith. Sends it back in front. Led to the save. Kruger looking for the rebound and it bounced away. Siebert holds the line for Chicago and fires it back in. Not made his NHL debut on October 24th against Calgary. Hadn't played since until tonight. Kevin Connaughton was traded from Vancouver to Dallas for one of Lindy Ruff's former players, Derek Roy. Now playing for St. Louis. Now shot in by Keith from the wrong side of center ice. And play is called. And so how the Dallas Stars will survive without Robida is a key question. Part of their power play, the penalty kill. And they got to cobble something together on that blue line to keep themselves in contention. Guard Brendan Dillon's playing over 20 minutes on average per year. He's the one guy for Lindy Ruff that's really going to have to step up, and I really believe he can do it. Never drafted coming out of Seattle in the Western League. He's one of those guys that's really turned into a gem. Huge character player. Now Ben Smith back for it. And it's tapped back into the Chicago zone. Smith had an injury-ravaged season last year, Pierre. One regular season game, one in the playoffs, as the Hawks break in two-on-one. Bullock in, fires, he hammered it wide. And Kruger back for it. Fortunately for Smith, his one playoff game was in the Stanley Cup final, which means he gets his name on the cup. Now that's time. Goligoski gathers it up for Dallas. Struggled in October was a healthy scratch at one point for Dallas. And now fires it down, it'll be icing against the stars and he knows he's looking skyward right now not just the icing but he gets caught in a pinch and he's pinching down there he gets no help at all from ryan garbutt that leads to a two-on-one that's just a miscommunication between the forward and the defenseman and that leads to a quality chance for brandon bowling Malagoski on the wrong end you'd have to save that james deal matt niskanen trade to Pittsburgh. Uh, it's worked out well for the guys in Pittsburgh and for Alex it's just finding its way right now with a new team and I think the James Patrick there working with him it's going to work out here. Entering pass for Hosa penalty coming to Dallas again it'll be a slashing call this time and the Chicago Blackhawks will go to the power play for the second time as Goligoski goes off. It's a tough sequence for Goligoski. First he gets beat for a two-on-one then he ices a puck and off the icing he can't change and he chops down on Jonathan Taves. That's actually Vernon Fiddler. That's why I think Goligoski's a little bit surprised. They got 33 Three. instead of 38. Correct. Whoops. And this power play brought to you by Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey. Taves wins the face off back to Sharp. Plays it across the key with Shaw standing in front. 
Patrick Kane back to Sharp. Winds and fires. Look at the pad save. And the rebound cleared out by Jordy Ben. Shots are even at three apiece. No score as we approach the midway point of the opening period. Now Keane across the line. For Sharp, to Keith, to Shaw. Back to Keith. Patrick Kane circling as well, but Cody Eakin knocked that puck away from Duncan Keith and back up to center ice. And now fired down the ice by Jordy Ben. Another guy never drafted Jordy Ben. He's done a really nice job in Dallas finding some guys that are kind of reclamation type projects and they've done a good job for them. Now the puck stolen by Vernon Fiddler and finally the Hawks break it out as Jonathan Taze peels back and the Hawks will begin a change. Nick Letty from Eaton Prairie, Minnesota. Chips it in for Chicago. Goes around for Taze. That pass intercepted. And Sean Horkoff couldn't clear it. Now Sharp goes leaping by Gonchar. Settles things down and finds Hosa. Seabrook comes cruising in from the point as Hosa works his way in. Drops it down to Sharp. Loose in front. A jam play. The loose puck goes to Horkoff. And he'll bank it down the ice. 30 seconds to go in the Goligoski penalty. And a steal down low by Garvin, whose speed is once again inevitable. And finally, Hosa pulls that free for Brandon Saad. Saad. Steaming in for Chicago. Throws it back in front. Jordy Ben knocks that down. For Stieg to Hosa. Loose it behind the Dallas goal. He plays it across to Saad. Back for Seabrook a drive. That was blocked in front by Garvin. That staggered him. And Ryan Garvin remains down on the ice for Dallas. And now the play called as Garvin in distress in the Dallas zone. That's, uh, remember Gregory Campbell last year for Boston. Virtually the same kind of situation. You get in the lane, you make a shot block. And this is Brent Seabrook shooting that puck. Oh. And it gets him on the inside part of the right leg where there's virtually no padding at all. Watch his right foot, it opens up right there and it gets him in a real tough spot. He can't put any weight on it at all. And he's a valuable player. Gord, you just talked about his speed. We showed his speed earlier in the game, and that makes him such a valuable component for this team. Four years at Brown University. Training partner with a guy that he knocked out yeah. earlier this year. Yeah. Dustin Penner of the Anaheim Ducks. He's got a five-game suspension for that. They know each other well. And Penner said he'll get garbage back maybe in the summer when he least expects it. <laughs> and he probably will. By the way, Dustin Penner has done a fantastic job for the Ducks. He really has. What a pickup by Anaheim. Yeah, playing with Corey Perry and Ryan gets out. It's tough to be a bad player with those guys, but nonetheless, Penner looks really good. Games are back to even strength as Brandon Deary throws it in. Michael Hans is out of the lineup for Chicago again tonight. So Deary takes his second line center spot as Saad picks up the loose puck. Brandon Saad throws that down to the side of the goal and Lettman scoops that up. And hangs on. The NHL on NBC returns to Chicago with no score in the first period after this. Team start. These are tough games to play. Probably a coach's nightmare. Real tough game. First game back here. We had a great trip here, but uh, this is a hard-working team. The simpler, the better. A couple power plays weren't very good here. we got to pick it up. Are you impressed by the Dallas Stars' speed? They are. they got speed and they're relentless. They go up the ice hard. They come back to their end even quicker. So they you know, they play that type of game here. we got to keep it simpler. The simpler, the better. You're the defending Stanley Cup champs. What makes you the most proud about your team right now this season? Well, I like the, I like their last road trip. I think we got the best uh, four-line rotation over a sequence of games that we've seen all year. Consistency, everybody's contributing, and I'm real happy with the way we played. Thanks a lot, Joe. You betcha. Off the face-off, that pass goes by Ray Whitney and down the ice. There's a nice hit call against the Dallas Stars. And here, the circus trip and the skating trip. So in November, the circus comes in. In February, it's an ice show. And every year, the Hawks have to go on these long road trips. It used to break their back almost every year. Not so much anymore. Well, what about this February? They'll be busy with another kind of trip, yeah. most of these players. They've got a six-gamer. The ice show trip is right before the Olympics. The Hawks could have as many as 10 or 11 players playing for different teams in Sochi. Gotcha. Back of the line is Goligoski. The puck bounced off his stick and back up to center ice. He's got Kane all over. Patrick Kane wins the battle for the puck. In he comes. Kane shoots and left him the save. Harry left another great save there as Patrick Kane keeps his hot roll going into the December. The NHL player of the month of November still at it. Spins off Trevor Daly. 
Winds his way back in, finally loses the puck, but keeps it in the zone. Throws it back down in front. Shaw with a chance, and that goes wide. And the puck was at the side of the goal again. Shaw had his stick tied up, and Goligoski tries to clear it up for Dallas, and finally does. There was 45 seconds of Patrick Kane doing what he does best. When you and I had a chance to visit with him this summer in Arlington, Virginia, at the U.S. camp, you could just see he was fitter than ever before, more mature than ever before, and he was more ready to play. Now a turn with a London loose puck in front of Chancellor Sharp as Carrie London misplayed the puck in behind the Dallas goal. And Hosa feeds down to Tate. Shots are 6-3 to three in favor of Chicago, still no score. And Eric Cole lifts that puck up to center ice. This is Chicago's top line out against the fourth line for Dallas. Don Char being trailed there by Taze. They collide in the corner. And the puck comes free to Hosa. Throws it back to Keith. Back in front to Sharp. Long shot. Footers down in front. Levin say rebound. Hosa stopped by Levin. Puck still loose in front. And finally, that's cleared away by Dillon. And here come the Hawks again. Seabrook with it. Relentless pressure by Chicago. Seabrook's sharp angle shot is kicked away. And Nachushkin finally to the line and out for Dallas. And these guys need off for the Stars. Sharp. Throws it back down to the Dallas zone where Jordy Finn waits for it. Looks ahead for his brother Jamie. And Cody Eakin comes streaking in for Dallas. Drops it off for Nachushkin. Long shot scores! Valerie Nachushkin. The Russian rookie snaps at home, and the Stars withstand the onslaught and take the lead. Gord, he didn't need off. You're talking about guys needing to change. He stayed on. Jamie Benn came on. Cody Eakin came on. And the Chushkin was a trailer, and he takes a pass and blows it through the screen from Duncan Keith, and Corey Crawford can't stop it. Good play by Cody Eakin. One-handed feed, and that just goes right through Keith and right through Crawford, and it's one nothing Dallas. So the elongated shift for Nachuskin works out well. Well, <laughs> remember when Thomas Vanek, Derek Roy, and Maxime Finneganoff were rookies playing for Lindy Ruff? And yes. how frustrated Ruff would be because their shifts were long? I don't think he minded that long shift. Well, probably did right to the last part. There's a big hit on Jalmerson. So Nachuskin who played just eight and a half minutes against Edmonton the other night, was in danger of being a healthy scratch again. Gives Dallas the go-ahead goal. Now a shot by Connaughton. That can flex wide as Kevin Connaughton got a good shot away and gets it right back in the line. Long wrist shot through traffic. That goes wide, and Jordy Ben picks it up. So it was all Chicago there for about two and a half minutes. And then Natushkin sneaks one through, and the puck trickles back in front. Crawford's got it. And he'll hang on. The 18-year-old Russian... Valerie Nachushkin has the Dallas Stars out of Chicago, one to nothing. Good week on the NHL schedule. Wednesday, it's rivalry night as the Flyers take on the Red Wings. Coverage begins with NHL Live. Thursday on the NHL Network at 8, it's the Blackhawks and the Wild. And Monday on the NHL Network at 6.30, the Blue Jackets and the Penguins. Download the app or watch live online at NBCSports.com slash live extra. Home game for Doc Emmerich in Detroit. Eddie Olchuk and Doc Emmerich and I will be there tomorrow. And Chicago is going to have their hands full going into Minnesota. Minnesota is playing very well right now. They played a real solid game last night against the Philadelphia Flyers. Scored. Love the way Miko Koivu is playing with Jason Pominville and Jack Parise. There's Ray Whitney with a shot to the flex off a stick and wide. So Chicago Pierre comes home from a seven-game road trip and now plays six in nine nights what you were talking about before but this is where the maturity of their team matters so much and the consistency from the of the coaching message from Joel Quenville this is just such a professionally run organization in Chicago it really is so through 25 games this year about seven points off their pace from that incredible start last year but Joel Quenville maybe even happier with this start than the one last year. The Hawks appear to be avoiding the hangover. Now Kane, in with Saad. Patrick Kane in. And Trevor Daly took a shot away. Is he going to stick on him? Now Daly, or Daly rather, goes across to Goligoski, and it's chipped out by Ray Whitney. The Wizard, Ray Whitney, lost the puck to Saad. In he comes. Brandon Saad shoots. Left in the stock. And Johnny Odilia picks up a loose puck, leaves it there for Perry. Scooped up and moved ahead for the moment by Dustin Jeffrey. And ahead for Peverly. And that puck is into the Dallas bench. 
Lord, if you're going to engineer an upset in Chicago, their record is 9-1-3 and three this season. Your goalie has to be large. Brandon Saad comes in, whips one right on goal, and Kari Leitman has played tremendously well for the Dallas Stars. But you think about Chicago's home record, 9-1-3 and three here. They're so comfortable playing at home. If your goalie, if the opposition goalie's not good, you have a very little chance of winning here. And strangely, Dallas a much better team on the road than at home oh, right up the drop. It's Andrew Shaw scoring off with Antoine Roussel. I thought he was from France scoring. Wow. Look at this. See, that's the lines we've got to get in there. Andy McKellen and let him get loose. And now he's mad and he takes him down. Von Roddy and Andy McKellen try to get in. And one of the linesmen lost hold and Roussel took some extra shots because of it. And the conversation continuing yeah. as McKelvin talks to Shaw. That's this is something the Hawks don't do very often, Pierre, just no. their fifth fight of the year. Now Andrew Shaw goes out of center, Versteen goes in, look what they do, they switch it up right away. So that's one of those, okay, I know what's coming, let's tee it up and let's get going. Roussel's got some pretty good lefts going there. Shaw's a tough customer, and this is where it gets a little bit out of kilter. The linesmen lose it right there. McCalman lets the hands go, and that's when he gets mad and wrestles Shaw right down to the ice. And a close-up look there at the job of a linesman. Punches flying, yeah. skates flying. That's a dangerous, dangerous place to be. It really is. Hey, how about Antoine Roussel? He deserves some credit there. Andrew Shaw's one tough hombre. Good outcome. This one is number 21, Antoine Roussel. Five minutes for fighting. Five on coming with season five, Andrew Shaw. Five minutes for fighting. Offsetting fighting majors. And under five to go now in the opening period in Dallas with the one nothing lead. Although the Hawks did fashion comebacks and four of their wins on the road trip. And in comes Patrick Sharp loose. Sharp in. Up from behind by Dillon. But no penalty coming. Kane throws it back in front. Another close call for Chicago. The shots are 10 to 4 in favor of the Hawks. At the line, held by Oduya with a drive. That's blocked by Chase on a long drive and left him a save on that from Jalmerson. Uh, you just love the speed of the Chicago Blackhawks. We've talked about Dallas. This is one of their quicker players, Patrick Sharp. More shots than anybody else in the Hawks. And he misses right there because of a great job of persistence from Brendan Dillon who comes back, gets his stick into the hands, and does a good job not taking a penalty. Shaw wa or Sharp wanted one, but no penalty. He's telling the referee right now, Eric Furlock, hey, that's a hook. Face off was won by Horkoff, and Gonchar picks it up. Mossy goes to Nachushkin. You mentioned the KHL Rookie of the Year last year was picked 10th overall by Dallas last summer in the draft. And Saad picks it up for Chicago. Finds Kane. First team trying to get loose in front, and Kane now loose in the corner with it. Kane feeds it back. Letty with a long drive. Letton the save, and the rebound. Hammered right on by Michael Roosevelt. And Letton makes the stop on that. Call Star Star NHL to download NHL Game Center and get a free premium upgrade only on Verizon. Enjoy exclusive like free NHL, free live NBC National Games. Never be without hockey with NHL Game Center. Kari Leighton played for Yokert, which is a legendary program in the Finnish Elite League. They're going to be actually joining the KHL next yeah. year. And their general manager is a guy you know very well, Gord, from Edmonton. Yachty Curdy. Harry Curry is the GM there. It's a, a big question about the impact that will have on Finnish hockey. If one of the top clubs leaves to play in the KHL, where will that leave the other teams? And it's happening more and more across Europe. Now Keith with a shot that's tipped just wide. Well, to the Czech Republic, Slovakia doing the same thing. Sweden as well. Vernon Fiddler battles for it. Brandon Pollock, this fourth line, so good for Chicago on the road trip. Pollock scored in the close against Phoenix on Saturday. How about Ben Smith? What a good trip he had. Useful player, a lot of speed, nice speed. Now Pollock with a chance, that's blocked by Daly. And the outlet pass goes to Rich Peverley. 
Up ahead for Vernon Fiddler. They go rink wide. The chance now for Garbage streaking in. So Garbage back on for Dallas after blocking that shot. Gets a quick chance. How about that after the shot block? Garbit was screaming for the puck right from in front of me, Gordon. And everybody heard it on the Dallas bench, and they started to mimic what he was saying. About five minutes after he was screaming in agony for blocking that shot. That's right. Two and a half to go in the opening period. 13 to four are the shots for Chicago, but it's one nothing Dallas as Taves Steps across the line offside. Transition play, and you're going to see Peverly gains the line. He looks over because he hears Garbutt screaming. And Garbutt tries to make a bullet pass to the front of the net to Vernon Fiddler. They just can't cash. But a nice job by Ryan Garbutt. Think about Brown University where he was there. That Aaron Bull Patty. Yeah. That's two nasty pieces of pisses playing for an Ivy League school guard. In the meantime, his coach, Lindy Ruff, has known him all his life. Lindy played with his dad, Gord Gar, but he also played, Lindy did, with Cody Eakin's dad, Butch, in junior hockey. Jimmy Nell did as well, didn't he? Played against him, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure Lindy's real pleased about coaching the sons of guys he played with, but it is a testament to his longevity. <laughs> did you tell him that? He wasn't buying. I, I tried that. He's just... Now the puck picked up by Hosa, walks in and fires, left the save. Save with a chance of the rebound, the loose puck in front goes to Eakin. And Jamie Benn had broken his stick, so he could have to pick the puck back up. He's taken down, and a penalty coming to Chicago. A tripping call with 1.55 to go. As Jalmerson will go off, and the Dallas Stars will get their first power play of the game. An equipment malfunction leads to this penalty. Jamie Benn gets in the lane and blocks a shot there. Stick breaks. Cody Eakin says, I don't know, the stick's broken, tries to move it to him. Then he goes and gets his self-pass, and Nicholas Jalmerson chops him down like a tree. Jalmerson with a trip at 18.05, and Dallas goes to the power play, and the power play brought to you by Craftsman. Dallas with nine power play goals on the year, eight of them scored on the road. Cody Eakin leads the way with two. Mentioned that Dallas has one power play goal at home this year. The Stars have allowed a shorthanded goal at home as well, so basically the power play is even. Oligoski down to Whitney. In for Chason. Amy Ben circling in front as Whitney has it poked away and it's fired down the ice by Smith. 1.30 to go in the opening period. And Goligoski with a head of steam for Dallas. Up ahead for Ben. Hosa disrupted his rush. And now Ben back on it. Taps it back to Goligoski. To Whitney, the forward playing the point. Back to Goligoski. He winds in. Fire score! Tipped in front by Shazan. And the Stars lead 2 to nothing. And this crowd goes silent in Chicago. This is the most dangerous game you have to play if you're the home team coming off a seven-game road trip. So tough. Everybody knew it. They had their chances early on, but now Dallas being opportunistic. And it all starts with Ray Whitney and his composure moving the puck over to Goligoski. You see number 12, Chason, right in the slot. It goes off him and through Corey Crawford. Nice job of being composed with the puck by the Dallas Stars off a good entry. Led by Jamie Benn. Goligoski head up, identifies, and off the stick of Chason. Chason missed a penalty shot on Friday night against Chicago that would have given Dallas the lead. And now he gives him a 2-0 lead in Chicago as we enter the final minute of One the first period. One minute. And now Saad back with it for Chicago. Not like the Hawks have been flat. They're out shooting Dallas 14-5. But for once, the puck's are going in for Dallas and not Chicago, at least for now. Now looks at high in the air by Fiddler, the bouncing puck in front of Cole, and Jalmerson picks it up. And Peary slides that down to the Dallas zone. Gonchar to Dillon. Back to Sergey Gonchar. Long lead pass by Derek Cole. Knocked off the puck by Seabrook. A battle along the wall as Garbage gave his man a shove. And in comes Seabrook across the line. Long reshot. shot. Letman steers that away. Final seconds now. The opening period. 
and the puck bounces into the Dallas Stars bench to coach Lindy Ruff. Jason, a Montreal area native, Pierre, who did not speak English when he went to prep school in upstate New York. At Northwood Prep, where, again, we're talking about some of the great alums that have gone there and made great careers in the National Hockey League. Legendary Mike Richter, Tony Granato, just to name a couple, the Lappins. Duncan Keith, long shot onto the pad of Lettman. And the Dallas Stars, after a good road period, will walk out of the opening period with a 2-0 lead after one. Stay tuned for the Lexus intermission with Russ Taylor, Mike Milner, and Keith Jones talking about the Hawks looking for some payback and some magic moves in Columbus. So some pretty good moves here tonight in Chicago. The Hawks with all kinds of chances, but it's the Dallas Stars who have seized the lead. 2-0 our score after the opening 20 minutes. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. And by Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Back in Chicago on this Tuesday night, the Hawks outshoot the Stars 16-5, but Pierre Maguire, Valerie Nachushkin, a fourth-line player in danger of losing his spot in the lineup, scores at the end of a shift that was too long, and then Dallas with the lowest ranked power play in the league scores on a tip by Chason to make it 2-0. Tough that to was, figure. Yeah, that was their 10th power play goal of the year on 87 chances. So they're 30th in the league. You're absolutely right. But the big thing was the overstayed shift by Nachuskin. The two guys he jumped on with, Eakin and Ben, Jamie Ben, they're the guys that made it happen, and Nachuskin just had a real good shot. But it shows you when you have real good goaltending, Gord, you can create some upset opportunities. And Kari Leitman was really, really good in the first period. A game played with a rubber disc on ice, bound to be unpredictable. And so, the second period starts five on five with Dallas holding a two-goal lead. The Stars have allowed some leads to get away of late, and Chicago is the best comeback team in the league. Jamie Benn back to Trevor Daly. Long lead pass for Cody Eakin, who tips that down to the start. The Hawks zone, rather, as Jonathan Taves picks it up. Whoa, up hard there by Ben, right in front of the Dallas bench. He's playing for Olympic position there. You are right after the Golden Boy. And a lot of people think that Ben might be on a line with Jonathan Taves if he does make the Olympic team. Lord, you know, we had a chance to see Jamie Ben play so well for Canada at the 09 World Junior in Ottawa. And there he gives Jonathan Taves, who was a star of the 07 and the 06 World Junior for Canada. He gives him a rough ride. And I agree with you, by the way. There's a real good chance if Jamie Ben does make the team, he will play with Jonathan Taves. Both combatants from the first period come off the ice. Well, Shaw's going to stay on. Antoine Roussel goes off. And I agree with what Mike and Keith are talking about with Russ Thaler. That was back to last Friday, yeah, the hits on game. Yeah. But everybody knew where to move. It was amazing. It was like musical chairs. Okay, you go here, you go here, and we'll just square up. I've never seen a game of musical chairs end like that, to be honest with you. You didn't go to school or I did. <laughs> Apparently not. Andrew Shaw wins that drawback. And the puck scooped up by Brandon Saad. Scored in the first three games of the year for Chicago, but it's been a struggle to score since. But Saad at the... Tender age of 20, already a factor for Chicago. Here's Kane with it. Puts it back down to Saad, who wears Al Secord's old number, but had no idea who he was when asked about him. He's been a pilot of one of those planes. Yeah. Al Secord, a 54-goal scorer for Chicago 30 years ago. And a lot of people think that Saad plays a very similar game. Uh, I don't know if he could throw like Al Secord. Mike Norbury could testify to that. Al Secord is one tough guy. So air rage would not be a good idea if you hear that Captain Secord is flying the plane. Yeah. You know, Brandon saw though, he's, you know, you think about his career in Saginaw, and then last year during the work stoppage playing for Teddy Denton Rockford. What a short season he had there before helping Chicago win the Stanley Cup. Teddy Dent down there, by the way, has done a phenomenal job coaching their farm team. Brandon Peary is on the ice right now, one of the beneficiaries of Dent's coaching. 13 members of this Hawks team have played in Rockford previously. 
Now Roussel in for Dallas, trying to throw that back in front. The pass intercepted by Rose of all ahead for Kane to Perry. And Brandon Perry finds Kane between the legs, loose in front of Letty. Nick Letty with a shot. Left with a save on him in tight. What a pass by Patrick Kane. And Mike Nobre is right between the legs is all the rage in the NHL. You're going to score on Kari Layton and you got to elevate the puck. He's going to gobble everything up down low. Now Shaw works in on Jeffrey. The puck bounces around in the corner. Down to Sheldon Brookbank who draws into the lineup with Michael Hans who's out. And Brookbank seeing very limited ice time. Gets a hook on Peverly but the puck brought up by Jeffrey. Jeffrey works his way in, drops it back in front of chance for Peverly, he hammered that wide. And Dustin Jeffrey with a good pass there, now Kadotten plays it across, Gonchar a drive! And the save made by Crawford. Sergey Gonchar is the oldest defenseman in the NHL, but he can still bring it from the back end. And Shaw now across the line, drops it back to Keith. And that slap pass for Shaw missed, now Seabrook sends it back in front. Gonchar springs it ahead to Whitney, Ray Whitney in! Taken down by Seabrook, the puck goes wide, and Whitney thought there should have been a penalty, none coming. Gonchar pokes that down in the corner. Another chance for Dallas in the early going. And back comes Bullock as the fourth line's on for Chicago, fires that down to the corner. All three members of this line scored on that seven-game road trip. Balagoski in across the line, flips it back in front, just missed Nechushkin with it. And Nechushkin... Lost the handle, but Daly sends it back in front, off a of skate and wide. Now Nachushkin loose down low. Works it back in front, Eric Cole scores! Between the legs, Eric Cole, and it's 3-0 Dallas. Showtime for the Stars. You're getting showtime in Harlem. Globetrotters like passing from your fourth line. Something's going right for your group. The Chuskins already scored in this game. Eric Cole wasn't happy with his first period. Real smart play by Trevor Daly to keep that play alive. And then good communication with Horkov and the Chuskin keeping it alive. Wraparound attempt. And then Eric Cole's a beneficiary, beating his man off the mark, getting to the front of the net, and sticking it to the back of the net. Ben Smith got beat off the boards by Eric Cole, and Eric Cole made him pay. Wasn't quite between the legs, between the feet, though. And Eric Cole, who needed that one badly, just his third of the year, he had one goal, Pierre, in his last 23 games. He was so disappointed with himself in the first period where he had a potential breakaway opportunity where he just couldn't match pace. And he's really thinking Here they come again. Jamie Ben with a sharp angle shot. Crawford the stop on him. And now the Stars all over Chicago with a 3-0 lead. You talked about this before the game and during the first period with Quenville. The first game back from the road trip, whether it's a... An urban myth or not, it's a fact for Chicago tonight. It's just a coaching nightmare, it really is. Now Goligoski loves to hand for Eakin who chips that down the Chicago zone. The puck almost turned over again. Now Marion Hosa picks his way ahead. Hawks need a spark as Hosa, the man provided. Here he comes across the line. Gives it in deep, Lettman kicks that puck to Dillon. Up for Roussel. And now Vernon Fiddler picks it out as Seabrook steps into him. Heath. Long lead pass for Kane. Hawks in the midst of the change as Kane works in with Seabrook. Patrick Kane in, saves it rink wide. The pass knocked away by Garbutt. What a game Ryan Garbutt's having for Dallas. As Duncan Keith picks it up. Feeds across for Saad. He got tangled up. And Fiddler on the backhand plays it back out to center ice for Dallas. Three goals on nine shots for the Stars for a 3-0 lead early in the second period. A leadership from Eric Cole. You heard Jamie Benn before the game. Serrano with Eric Cole, Ray Whitney. Sergey Gonchar, Sean Horkoff, a lot of good veteran presence on this team. So when you're a young guy like Jamie Benn and you're named the captain of the team, those guys really insulate you and help you a lot. And I love what Jim Bell was saying to you and I before the game. He sat down with Jamie Benn last spring when Jimmy got the job and he said, I want you to be the captain of the team. And Benn's eyes just lit up. Really, you do? And ever since then, he's never looked back. The question about Benn is... Is he a center or a winger? They tried him at center at the start of the year. His face-off percentage is excellent, up around 62%.
You know what he is, Gord? He's a multi-dimensional weapon. He can play anywhere. It's just a starting point for him. He's just so strong in the puck. Bouncing puck off the face off. They whack away out of the puck. Still loose in front and finally scooped up by Jordy Ben. Davey's older brother. Who took his first minor penalty of the season on Sunday night. So we talked about veteran presence for the Dallas Stars. And no one more experienced than 41-year-old Ray Whitney, who, among other things, has the claim of being one of four active players left in the NHL who played in the old Chicago Stadium across the street. Party brother, Timu Salani, Yarmir Yager, the other three. And the wizard, Ray Whitney. Correct. Who can also claim he played in the Cow Palace in San Francisco, the Palais de Boeuf. Yes. In the first year of the San Jose Sharks. Look at that by Kane. Wow. And a long backhand shot floats just wide. Up comes Oduya with it. His long shot gloved by Lettinen. Now, Ray Whitney, not the only one who has good experience from the Chicago Stadium. I know somebody else who has good memories from that old building. There's the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Stanley Cup winners back in 1992 on the ice. And who's that guy in the middle who, judging by the glasses, had just done some welding? I had the same haircut, though. You did. <laughs> and the old visitor's room in Chicago Stadium, about the size of a cloakroom in most houses. Yep. A good walk down the stairs that night, though. I'll bet it was. And a wobbly one out the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Andrew Shaw back with what a building that was, and what a building this has become for Chicago. Way back to Michael Rose of all across to Johnny Odilia. Slides it back in front for Versteeg. He's being harassed there by Jeffrey. And now played back to Odilia. Winds and fires, and that shot goes off a stick and wide. Whitney trying to retrieve his stick. And played out by Trevor Daly. Hard to believe, though, that in coming years, Pierre, no one in dressing rooms will be able to tell young players what it was like at the Montreal Forum or the uh, Chicago Stadium or the Boston Garden. Or even the Maple Leaf Gardens or old Madison Square Garden. I mean, you're absolutely right. I couldn't agree with you more. Now walking in his teams with a shot that's off the stick of Gonchar. Up and out of play. 13.51 to go in the second period. And the Dallas Stars are shocking the Blackhawks in Chicago. Download the NBC Sports Live Extra app to watch the game live on your phone or tablet. Plus, have access to live chats with experts from Pro Hockey Talk. The NBC Sports Live Extra app on NBCSports.com slash Live Extra and NHL.com. Shots are 19-9 in favor of Chicago. Garvin turns the puck over, but Patrick Sharp can't keep it in. Remember that shot block in the first period for Ryan Garbutt. Every time he comes off the ice, he's still shaking it off. His leg's not feeling too good, but he's showing a lot of courage playing. You wonder if they let him take a skate off. <laughs> good point. Jonathan uh, Taves uh, kicks that ahead. And the play is offside as we go back inside the glass with Pierre Maguire. You know, Gordon, a lot of opportunities for the Chicago Blackhawks. I know the score is 3 nothing, but if you're not going to elevate the puck and Kari Lehman, you're going to have a problem. Look at where Chicago shots are. They're trying to go high, but not nearly high enough, and that's not going to score against him. He's a gargantuan type of goaltender, absolutely huge. There's Nick Letty just pile-driving one, trying to go 5 -hole. If you don't elevate it up by his ears, you're going to have a tough time scoring against this guy. A guy that was picked by the Atlanta Thrashers second overall in 2002 and now at the age of 30 seems to get it regarding fitness would you say absolutely in comes Kruger with a chance left with a stop on him up high and the Chuskin now with it lays it down to Jordy Ben but fitness and the buy-in this summer by him was huge eight in Dallas during the offseason as Bolig works it in finds Kruger in the other corner and Marcus Kruger Flips that back to Roosevelt. In comes Michael Roosevelt. Back in front for Kruger. Oh, and Lettman's got a piece of that. Got to be up higher. It's too easy for him. Unless you put it by his ears, he's going to shut you down. Now a stray stick down there. Picked back up by Smith, who stands in front. Tips it right on. And Lettman, the save on that through the traffic. Talking about a guy that's almost six foot five. 
So he's going to take up a lot of net, not as much as Ben Bishop, but a lot. Again, he intimidates you. you got to just get it on goal. You can't miss it. When Dominic Hasek played in this league, guys used to miss the net all the time because they thought they had to pick corners. If you miss the net, you're just going to make it easier on the guy. Get it up and get it in the upper corners. Now Pierre against Eakin on the faceoff. Dallas controls and the underrated Cody Eakin with another faceoff win for the Stars. This hockey sense is incredible, by the way, George. You talk about does he play center or wing? He can play anywhere, Cody Eakin. Now Kane back with it. Little back pass to Roosevelt. Michael Roosevelt works it in. Taps it down to Kane. Trying to find Pierre in front. Strip of the puck by Eakin. Now two stars collide. Saad picks it up. Plays it back in front to period bounced away from him. Roosevelt trying to find Kane the pass intercepted by Chason, and he finds Eakin. Dallas is changing, and Cody Eakin throws it back in front for Chason. Whitney back down, and Eakin couldn't reach that puck as Kane stepped in front of him. 22 to 9 now the shots for Chicago. In come the Stars again. Puck played across, and Jeffrey centers it, but Corey Crawford pounces on that. Good sequence for the Dallas Stars. Starts with Cody Eakin gaining the line, then they start moving the puck around, and eventually Dustin Jeffries is going to get a chance. Tries to feed it across the crease over to Rich Peverly. Just can't get it to him. Dustin Jeffrey was drafted by Pittsburgh in 2007, Pierre, and appeared in four rookie tournaments for them. The camps they have before training camp, if there was a rookie tournament Hall of Fame, he'd be a first ballot in that be. Yeah. Probably the all-time leader in games played in rookie tournaments. He got just in a tough situation wow. in Pittsburgh just because of their depth at center. And after they acquired Brandon Sutter in the Jordan Stahl deal, thanks for coming. So picked up on waivers on November 17th from Pittsburgh. And working his way to regular spot in the Dallas lineup. And remember, Tyler Sagan's out for Dallas. Day-to-day -day with the after effects of a collision against Chicago on Friday night. With what's described as concussion-like symptoms. Is that a concussion? As Oduya fires and Lutton makes the save. Shaw back on it. And the puck in the net, but went underneath from behind. And the face off in the Dallas zone. And you know what Chicago is trying to do on that last rush. Yeah, they shoot the puck low. They're trying to create a rebound opportunity. Johnny Oduya blasts it from a long way out. But well, watch Ricardo Layton and puts a puck. He doesn't put it back out front, Gord. He puts it down low so you create a skirmish kind of situation away from danger. That's how aware this player is right now. And you think about Tuka Rask and Kari Leighton for the Finns. Not counting Nicholas Baxham, not counting the injured Pekka Rene. Yeah. Not counting Anthony Miami. I mean, you think where Finnish goaltending is. Nifty move there by... Trevor Davis side step and check gives the puck away to Kane who fires right on left on the save on him and Kane battling down low with Garbutt but Daly has the loose puck for Dallas ahead for Fiddler it's Oduya to turn but Johnny Oduya stays with it Brookbank ahead for Bristig now Kane knocked off drive by Garbutt and Kane with his palms out looking for a penalty in comes Sean Horkov and his rush is stymied by Oduya now Garbutt picks it up and a penalty being called. It's an elbow against the Dallas Stars. And with 10.45 to go in the second period, Chicago's going back on the power play. All right, he gets the elbow up. All he has to do is keep his arm down. The check's good there until he extends the elbow. The right forearm and elbow into the face of Jonathan Tate. If he keeps his arm down, Gordon keeps it in, it's fine. But he extends his arm, and that's a penalty. So Roussel, who drew the ire of the Hawks for his hits on Patrick Kane on Friday, goes after Taves here. And now Taves will stay out for the power play, along with Shaw and Kane up front, Sharp and Keith on the back end. This is where Chicago's games improved so much from last year, their power play, 10th in the league. Going into action tonight, last year they struggled. And the funny thing is, last year they were the best penalty-killing team in the league, allowed the fewest power play goals, and this year, that part of their game has struggled. And now there's a problem with the glass. One of the stanchions. In the Dallas end. Yeah, one of the stanchions, something has come off one of the stanchions. Right there. So 
They'll have to get the glass back in place. In a building that can really shake. When they get the 22,000 in here, and it's sold out every night now. Of course, we saw a couple weeks ago in a game against Winnipeg, the glass came out and a fan grabbed a helmet off a player. Adam Party of the Winnipeg Jets and wore it. Yeah, I think Adam Party had a little beer bath too. Yes, he did. So the Chicago Bulls played here last night. The game went to three overtime, so the Bull gang, no, not the players for the Bulls, but the guys that do the changeover were working late into the night last night. They're calling them back. Now the other pain is oh. out. And this is a pain now. <laughs> Whoops, fellas, you forgot something. And if you're Joel Quenville, when you have the momentum of a potential power play, you don't want this. So they try to jack the fans up with some music. See if they can get her fixed. One of the greatest improvements in the league is returning this stuff, the plexiglass, instead of the old tempered glass. Well, Gordon, let's hope we don't have glass problems at the Olympics in Sochi. Two brand new arenas there. So as they fix the glass, we can tell you about players that were invited to Olympic summer camps, not necessarily going to be in the Olympics, but these are the guys who were invited to the preliminary camps and were on the rosters. Now, for Canada, Brett Seabrook, who was on the 2010 team, not likely to go to Sochi. But there's other guys who weren't invited that will be in the mix. Absolutely. And those are just Chicago. That's, just, that's just Chicago. That's just Chicago. And Dallas, well, they've got two. They went uh, to the camp. Now, yeah, Jamie Benn's got a yeah. chance for Canada. <laughs> but, you know, you wonder, though, Pierre, it's obviously a badge of honor for organization, but you talk to San Jose, which had more players in Vancouver than any other team. The guys came back banged up and exhausted from those Olympics, and that was in Vancouver. And they had four of them, Heatley, Thornton, Marlowe, and Boyle, who were key players for Canada. Now Taves works his way in as the power play gets underway with Duncan Geith playing it across to Patrick Sharp. Sharp by his Patrick Sharp, and the Hawks are on the ball. The entry is so important on a power play. And for Chicago, they get entry, puck support, and then it's good decision making, get bodies to the net, and the heavy shot of Patrick Sharp. Where was that shot, Gord? <laughs> up high, Pete. Oh, good. That shot was up high. And Sharp has his 11th of the year, four in his last seven games. The man who led the playoffs in goal scoring last spring has a big one for Chicago to get the Hawks back in the game. Boy, did Chicago need that. Scoring on its 25th shot of the game. And now it's a 3-1 game as we approach the midway point of the second period. The puck goes into the Chicago bench. Uh -huh. At the University of Vermont, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Patrick Sharks is one of those players where you say, what was Philadelphia doing when they traded him? He's found a home here in Chicago. He's an unbelievably popular guy. And Gordon, we talked about the importance of elevating the pot, but I can't tell you enough about the traffic. The guys in red getting to the front like Andrew Shaw and Jonathan Taves. So important. That window was open a crack. Yeah. And Sharp put it right through. Sharp shooter. Yes. Is that. Another guy that being, was being talked about is a, a useful, versatile player, potentially for Canada at the Olympics. A guy who can play center or either wing. Can Canada send three teams, Gord? No. Okay. Eric Cole with a shot that was off a leg and wide. Because every time we hear, oh, this guy can help react. Yeah, we know. Well, every local writer thinks that their guy's a lock. Right. That would be a 45-man Olympic team. I'll tell you one thing. People are underselling the American team. The American team is going to be really good. They're going to be very fast. Who's, under, be who's really underselling them? Oh, a lot of people. It's going to be a very good team. Really yes. is. So she is. Nachushkin works his way in, drops it back, and a chance in for Cole. Fires out, and Crawford got a piece of that. It deflects up over the glass and out of play. Patrick Sharp 
has given the Hawks some life. The power play goal that cuts the Dallas lead to two. Coach, you've been opportunistic so far here tonight. How do you settle your team down after that last power play goal? I think we, we just did. We had a good shift in the offensive zone, created a couple of good chances. we got to continue to play the game because if we sit back, these guys will hurt us. What impresses you the most about Jamie Benn's game? Uh, he's all around the puck all the time. Physically, he's strong. He knocks a lot of people off it. But you're going to find that during the game, he's got the puck a lot. Thanks a lot, Lindy. You're welcome. Rich Peverly for the faceoff for Dallas. Wins it for Ray Whitney. And Whitney throws it on goal. Crawford knocks that away. Off the faceoff win by Peverly, who has played all three forward positions on three different lines for Dallas so far this season. Came over from Boston in that Tyler Sagan trade that sent Louis Erickson, Riley Smith, and others to Boston. A blockbuster deal for Dallas. And that's then Tyler Sagan, who's out. With concussion-like symptoms, as Bullock fires on goal, and Lettman makes the stop on him. You could see what Lindy was talking about. You can't sit back, you have to keep attacking. Kari Leighton comes up large with his glove. Good decision by Bullock to elevate the puck again, high glove. Don't sit back, though, if you're Dallas. And good job, good decision, good hockey there by Chicago. Draw one, and Marion Hose's shot is blocked. Jason steps into Jalmerson. Battle along the wall. Hosa trying to pick it out. Cody Eakin taps it back. Here's Hosa centers it. Taves with a drive. He hammered it wide. Wow. A bullet from Jonathan Taves that just missed. Now loose in front again for Hosa. And Eakin picks up the loose puck. Eakin for Jordy Ben. The pass for Jamie intercepted by Seabrook ahead for Taves. And Taves gets hammered down there by Eakin. There's Seabrook back with it. Across to Jalmerson. And Jalmerson, a sharp angle shot, goes off the side of the goal and bounces down to Taves. Spins off, sends it in front to Sharp, and somehow that stayed out. Lettinen never saw it. And now Jordy Ben trying to clear it up, takes a bad bounce back in front to Hosa. And Terry Lettinen cleans that up as the Hawks are all over the Dallas goal. And that was a fear for Lindy Ruff. That's why I asked him the question, and you see. Kari Leighton has been the story, and the pressure's coming from the defending Stanley Cup champs. What an opportunity for Patrick Sharp right there, and a great stick by Jordy Ben. And then it's a little Manitoba on Manitoba. Cody Eakin's going to step up on Jonathan Taves and plant him right into the boards. Clean hit, hard play. A couple of guys who trained together in Winnipeg in the summer. Yes. These training partners are turning on each other, Pierre. Yes. Careful, Gord. Oh, look out, Michael Rosenball hammers down Roussel. And now Duncan Keith picks it up across to Rosenball. Swings that rink wide to Kane. Kane fires, left him to save the rebound, picked up by Fiddler. These teams played a terrific game in Dallas on Friday night, and they're going back and forth again tonight. And that puck went over the glass. And Michael Roosevelt, the latest to lower the boom. Well, a little line juggling, too, by Joel Quenville. He's Andrew Shaw out there instead of Brandon Peary. Trying to get some more physicality going. Roosevelt is a big body. He gets physical. So you see Saad Kane and Andrew Shaw right now on the ice rather than Brandon Peary. So you know what Joel Quenville's trying to do. He's trying to stimulate a, little, a bit more physical approach. So Roosevelt's a guy that Chicago signed Late in the summer last year, as a depth guy, he winds up playing a regular shift for them and leads the team at plus 18 last year. In comes Cole. Eric Cole steps around Roosevelt, throws it back in front. Crawford sweeps that away. The lesson for all GMs, as Dan Bowman knows here in Chicago, you can't have too many veteran defensemen. Well, I think you've got to give Stan a lot of credit. You've got to give Scotty, his father, a lot of credit, too. He learned that a long time ago, Montreal formula. There's Keith with a drive that goes wide. Now back out the other way, Oduya knocks that away from Nachushkin. Valerie Nachushkin in across the line. Here he comes, Nachushkin with a chance. He's got a shot away, his saw got a stick on him. And Peary fires it ahead to Oduya. Hawks are changing to Oduya. Slips that down to the Dallas zone with six and a half to go in the second period. Here he centers it. Ken Smith had that bounce away. Whitney kicking at it. 
And it's picked up by Versteeg. Walks it and fires. He missed high and wide. And Odunia, empty job to knock that down for Chicago. He finds Versteeg. Back in front to Perry with a shot. Off the stick of Gonchar. It's up and out of play. The Hawks are warming to the task. They're recognizing what they have to do. Now they just have to close the deal by hitting the net. Al McIsaac right there. Trusted assistant to Stan Bowman. All the scouts are in for Chicago. There's Stan Bowman on the right. He's GM of the Chicago Blackhawks. With some curling in the background. You never get enough curling here. You'll, uh, be, you'll be going to the curling in Sochi, won't you? Uh, no. No? I think Doc, Eddie, and I are a little bit busy with hockey. Oh, you know. If you get a chance, you know, the rolling game is pretty good. Bowling on ice. <laughs> exactly. Here's a chance for Steve. Can't pull the trigger. But you talk about the Chicago Blackhawks and what they've managed to do winning two Stanley Cups and filling the cupboard. It really is something. Kruger across to Jalmerson. Jalmerson fires. He hammered that wide. And this time, Oduya can't keep it in. Speaking of veteran defensemen, there's another one. Johnny Oduya that Chicago picked up for. Second and third round pick from Winnipeg is Ben Smith. Bounces his way in front. Back goes to Jalmerson. Long shot. That goes just wide. Let them never saw that. And cannot with it now as the Hawks are out shooting Dallas 28-11. But it's 3-1 stars. And Gonchar picks it up for Dallas. Amy Ben caught an edge and almost a chance for Sharp as the puck bounces down to Lutman. And he hangs on. You're watching the NHL on NBC from Chicago. Back with more after this. Kelly, the Chicago Blackhawks director of amateur scouting for the last eight seasons. His handiwork all over this team. How about this? The Hawks have nine players on their roster who were drafted after the first round. You've got Taves, Seabrook, and Keener first round picks, but nine others that were picked after the first round in the NHL draft. That's how you build a championship team. Brothers, that's a pretty good TV work, yes. too. David E. Kelly, the Hollywood producer. And that would make Mark Kelly's sister-in-law, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes. That's a good pick as well. By the way, their father was a great coach. Both yes. the Hartford Whalers, Jack. Across the line is Hosa. Every team since 2008 here has had at least five players in the lineup. Down a cup winner, that is. Were drafted after the first round. Now Natushkin with a chance. In on Keith. Let's respect his speed as Natushkin had to leave the puck. It would have been offside. And now Keith slaps that pass ahead for Taves. Here he comes with Saad. Taves in, shoots, left of the save. And the rebound cleared away by Daly. And the chances keep piling up for Chicago. Midler in on Brookbank. Up ahead for Taves. Now Dylan throws it back in front of back. And shot by Garbutt goes wide. And Saad hacks it out for Chicago. Now a steal by Taves. He's got Kane with him. Taves throws it back for Brookbank. And it's picked up by Saad. Brandon Saad. Goes across to Letty. Now Saad with a chance. Left in the save. Loose puck in front. Shaw couldn't corral the bouncing puck. Brookbank in for Kane. 30 to 11. The shot's down for Chicago. Kane in for Letty. Back to Kane. In he comes. Patrick Kane. Back to Brookbank. Bossy goes to Lenny with a drive score! Nick Lenny and the Hawks are within one! Now, they're going Globe Trotters now in red. Dominating the puck, good decisions. One timer from a bad angle right through the wickets. But a good job, Brookbank, composure, hard shot, Shaw right in front of Leighton. Antoine Roussel cannot do this. Turns it over, that starts the whole sequence in a bad way. Jonathan Taves off to the races, they get a line change, and then the fresh legs get on the ice, and it's trouble brewing for Dallas. So now, a one goal game on the goal by Letty, his third of the year, his first of his last 15 games. And the Chicago Blackhawks have climbed back within one, scoring twice on 31 shots. You called it before, Gordon. You talked about the way Chicago can come from behind against anybody in the league. And here's another example. All I have to do is watch the last period of Game 6 of Boston-Chicago last year. To determine that goal. Goal. And the most famous 17 seconds in Stanley Cup playoff history. Well, 
Now Bullock up ahead for Smith. Brookbank and Kane draw the assists on the goal. And the Hawks climb within one. So some nervous moments for Dallas. And now Smith with a loose puck working with Bullock. Jeffrey steps up on him. And now Beverly battles with the puck along the wall and chips it ahead. Ray Whitney with time, trying to buy some time for a line change. Backhands it down to the Chicago zone and heads off. Under three to go now in the second period. See what the shots are, Gord, right now? 31-11, my friend. Yep. Dallas being warned not to sit back. Dallas score! Johnny Oduya with a shot that pinballs down in front, and the game is tied! Got them on their heels. They're smelling blood, and they're taking advantage of it. Through the neutral zone. Crafty play by Kane. Keep it alive. Get bodies to the net. I don't know if Kruger touches that or not. Oh, do you shoots it? Does Kruger get it right there? Hard to did. tell. Nonetheless, the puck was elevated. It's 3-3. That's how quick it happens. We'll wait for the official announcement. Look as though Kruger got a stick on it, whether he meant to or not. Just when you think you have them down. And now Lettman falls on that. These guys are champs for a reason. And now the crowd, right back in it. Galverson down to Taves. Now back in front, Hosa with a chance, couldn't connect. And Hosa back on it. They give the goal to Adelia for now. Might be reviewed between periods. So goals just over a minute apart get the Hawks even with Dallas and the shots are 32-11 Chicago. Now when he knocks that back in front of Jamie Ben almost had a chance to tap that home. Ben back with it. Down to Garvin. He steps into Jalmerson and the puck comes free to Nachushkin. Pulls it back out. Sends it in front. Crawford to save on Nachushkin. And cannot back on it for Dallas. Now a broken stick for Jones, a loose puck in front for Nachushkin, he can't fire it home. Eric Cole with a chance, winds and fires, caught for the save, and he hangs on to the rebound. Jalmerson doesn't have a stick, that leads to some problems for the Chicago Blackhawks. You see four and red, he's looking for a stick, but he gets bumped off the puck. A good job by Kevin Connaughton, keep the play alive, and Cole blasts it. You see Nachuskin just can't get a stick on it. Corey Crawford fights it off. But the broken stick for Jalmerson caused all kinds of problems for the Hawks in their own zone. Now if you're Dallas, you just want to go to the period alive. You told him before the game he'd be even 3-3 at this point. They'd have taken it, but the way they got here, they're probably not happy with that. And Nachushkin lifts that way up in the air, gloved down by Keith. In comes Kruger. Marcus Kruger fires. Blocker save. Loose puck in front. Ben Smith turned away by Lettman. And with Dallas players sprawling and Chicago players falling on him, Harry Lettman makes the stop. Well, somebody in the Chicago bench informed the players, stop shooting the puck on the ice because now they're putting it up in the air and they're causing all kinds of problems for Kari Leighton and they're causing all kinds of problems for the Dallas Stars defense. That's a juicy rebound off a high shot for Marcus Kruger. We're gonna have some action potentially here. Brandon Bolig is ready. He's always ready to go. Young man out of St. Lawrence University. Vernon Fiddler talking a little trash to Chris Versteeg right now in the face-off circle. And the Central Division getting a look just like the good old days. By the way, speaking of look, Pierre, 
How good are the new Dallas uniform? Outstanding. I mean, the whole thing in Dallas is great right now. It really is. Did they get those things right? Yeah. Now, Jimmy Nell was a real good hire. Solid new owner. Great young players. Good coach. Very good coach. By the way, let's get some on a record right now. Those people in Buffalo, Lindy Ruff wasn't the problem. Lindy Ruff was far from being the problem there. Quality player procurement. Real bad free agent signings. That wasn't Lindy Ruff's fault. 15 years in Buffalo. Emotional return for him this year. We'll go back there. On a trip that saw them have a lot of returns. Sagan back to Boston, Hill back to Detroit. Work off back to Edmonton. There's Letty with a shot that goes off a leg, and now a chance for Brookbank, who fires it back in. As we go to the final minute of the second period. Brookbank to Letty. In for Kane. He's got Garvin all over him. They've been nose to nose all night. Kane works down behind the Dallas goal. Throws it back to Brookbank. His wrist shot blocked. And it bounces down to Perry. In for Versteeg. Being shadowed there by Daly. And now Versteeg bobbles it. And Vernon Fiddler intercepts for Dallas. And a leaping Versteeg can't knock it down as it goes into the Chicago bench. Chris Versteeg reacquired by Chicago for the Florida Panthers. Was a member of their 2010 Stanley Cup championship team. One of the nine regulars from that team who had to be shipped out for salary cap reasons. Florida got Jimmy Hayes and Dylan Olson. Jimmy Hayes out of Boston College, Dylan Olson out of Minnesota Duluth, and Christopher Stieg out of Lethbridge in the Western Hockey League, where he's trying to buy the team board. Yeah. A lot of that going around these days. And Ryan Suter just bought the Madison Capitals in the U.S. Hockey League. Good on Ryan Suter and the Suter family. And Mary Lemieux bought a team too, didn't he? Oh yeah, the Penguins. This is working out okay. That one's long pass misses, and that'll be a nice call against Dallas with 22 seconds to go. And Gord Juicy Jokinen owns yes. Olu in the Finnish League, and Yarmir Yager owns Kladno in the Czech League, and Martin Strack owns a team too. So, ownership's going around with these players. Game's changed, my friend. <laughs> Game has changed. And let's not forget in Campbell's where Mark Recky, Jerome, and Ginla and Shane Dolan own the team. Maybe Ben, rink wide for Chase on that pass bounced off his stick and Oduya picks it up. And right now Oduya being credited with a tying goal for Chicago. Shaw just missed Hosa with that. And the final seconds now of the period as Hosa tries to dig it up for Saad. And Ben picks that out to the Chicago Blackhawks with three unanswered. Well, even at three after two periods of play. Stay tuned for the Discover Card second division with Russ Thaler, Mike Milber, and Keith Jones. The Hawks respond to Roussel and overtime on the island. Well, these teams went to overtime last Friday in Dallas. And right now, after 40 minutes, they're even at three on the NHL on NBC. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Hanes Comfort Blend T-shirts and underwear. Hanes softest, most comfortable ever. And by Verizon, the official wireless partner of the NHL. Back in Chicago, where the Hawks trailed 3-0 midway through the second period, but Joel Quinville's troops have battled back to even the game at three and here. Last year, Chicago got off to that tremendous start. And of course, went on to win the Stanley Cup. But you get the sense from Quenville, he is as excited or more about this group than that one. Well, this is a mature group, Clark. You know, they've looked the devil in the eye and they've slain it. I mean, they've understood the whole process of winning. And this team's been put together methodically by really smart hockey people. Since the NHL cap era began in 2005, no team has won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. And you know they learned their lesson from 2010. I mean, they, you talk about the proverbial hangover. They had it, and they had it for a long time. And they had to gut their team. Yep. You think about Andrew Ladd, how he would still fit in here. Now Goligoska goes back with Jonathan Taze trailing him as the teams begin the third period at even strength. And Cody Eakin comes streaking in, drops it back in front. There's a chance for Ben, oh. blocked by Johnny Oduya up high. 
and Ben goes sprawling into the corner. They're both slow to get to their feet. I think that got Oduya right in the chest where there's no pad. And Oduya very slowly back to the Chicago bench. And Brandon Peary picks it up for the Hawks. What excites Quindle about this group is the push from young players. Saad, Peary, and others who are pushing some of the veterans on their team. Don't forget Jeremy Morin's another one. Yep. Down in Rockford. Down in Rockford. Lead pass for Nachushkin, working it on Keith. Valerie Nachushkin fights off Keith, throws it back in front for Jordy Benny, can't handle it. Two on one, Chicago. Saw it with Kane. Brandon saw it in, and Lightning makes the blocker save on him. If you were going to miss that pass, you had to make it right away to Patrick Kane. Saw it did the right thing, getting it on goal. Oh, and now man. Kane, what a move. Oh, man. Just sidestepping that check from Cole. Kane on the ice for all three Chicago goals in that second period. You're not happy you didn't get the puck. I can tell you that. You're not happy. Now a lead pass for Smith too far for him. And that's an icing call against Chicago. Well, Jamie Benn had a real good chance for Dallas to put him up 4-3, but Johnny Oduya makes a great shot block right here. And it does. It gets him up in a chest where there's no padding at all. And here's the chance. Saad had to move that right there. The longer he holds it, it makes it a bit more difficult play for him, and Kane would never have had a chance to get the puck. Now Saad. The change after the icing as the puck goes back down to the Dallas end, and Sergei Gonchar, a four-time Russian Olympian, shifts it down to the Chicago zone. Beverly down there along with Whitney, and Ray Whitney picks up the loose puck. The only original San Jose Sharks still playing in the NHL. He took his lumps playing for them. And in comes Lenny with a chance. Nick Lenny loose in front. Oh, what a pad save by Kyrie Lipton. Rebound put wide by Kruger. Chicago all over Dallas here to start the period. The shots are 37-13 Chicago. Oh, oh, another move by, Litt by Letty around Whitney. Sends it right on goal and left him the save on him. I think Nick Letty's mad. He missed a couple shifts in the second period, but he's jumping through the gym right now. And Daly up ahead to Gonchar, who chips it up to center ice as Dallas is in the midst of a chain. Kazan picks up the loose puck and throws it ahead. Nifty move by Roussel. Gets in behind Jobbers and Roussel in. Poke check by Crawford. A penalty coming up and it's going to be a penalty shot for the Dallas Stars. Nick Jalmerson gets beat by the quick Antoine Roussel. It's a Friday night when Dallas was awarded a penalty shot at home against Chicago. That's the penalty shot right there. He can open hers. Roussel as he goes to the net, he opens them right up. Bob Keith and Mike were talking about young players doing special things. And Roussel's had a target on his back all game. Now he gets a chance to remove the target. Scored twice against Anaheim last week. It was Chase on who missed on a penalty shot on Friday night, hit the goalpost. And Roussel with a chance now to restore the Dallas lead. In he comes on Crawford. Roussel scores! What a move by Antoine Roussel! Now he's going to the crowd. Oh, that's not what you do. Uh-oh. That's not what you do. And now the Hawks yeah. having a word with Roussel who put that target right back on his back. Yeah, the target would have been gone, but now it's back. And Mike and Keith talked about a young player who's not going. He had to settle this puck down, too. Not an easy thing to do. Takes it to the back end, goes roof on Corey Crawford. And good for Dallas to hang in there. But you can expect a little bit offense from the defense oh, from there's, Chicago. There's the hand of the year for the Chicago crowd. As unforgiving a bunch as there is in the NHL. So Dallas is back in the lead with four goals on 14 shots. On a remarkable night in Chicago. You talk about it and talk about it, but the trap games will come up and bite you. Now Nachushkin working in with Ben. Nachushkin throws that back in front, intercepted by Oduya, who's back out for Chicago, and the lead pass goes to Taze. Streaking it as Hosa, they drop it back to Sharp. Points and fires, letting the stop. 
And he's got the rebound. Lindy Ruff doing a little line juggling too, putting the cushion up there with Eakin and Ben rather than Chason. So the Tears can play eight and a half minutes in the game against Edmonton, but now he's taking a regular shift tonight. And Taves distributes to the sharp shooting Patrick Kane, and Kari Layton and just fights it off with his blocker. And now Peary will face off against Peverly in the Dallas zone. Morty Ben to Brendan Dillon up along the glass and a race for it now as Keith goes back and has to touch it before it reaches the icing line and it's turned over to Peverly. Down he goes to Horkoff, Cole's alone in front. The centering pass goes to Peverly and that's knocked away in a diving play by Keith. In comes Peverly with a drive and Crawford makes the stop on him. It's amazing when you start to get confidence because of one guy going in on a penalty shot and scoring. And now the Chicago bench is letting Antoine Roussel know about it as he skates onto the ice for his next shift after the penalty shot goal. And Brandon Bola comes over to have a word with yeah. Roussel. And you see Fiddler tell Roussel, just be ready. Again, Joel Flanville gets a last change. This should be interesting. And Bullock takes a whack at Roussel on the way by, but play continues. Bullock oh, with Roussel in the sights the whole time, and Roussel just slams down Roosevelt. Did he ever? That's not an easy thing to do. Here Remember, he comes he again. Took a hit from him earlier and knocked him down. Here he comes again. And Ray Whitney picks up the loose puck, had his stick lifted. And away comes Smith for Chicago, along with Bullock. Bullock gets a hard bump from Jordy Bend that comes up with a puck. And Fiddler puts that over the glass. And is this going to be a penalty? No, they'll say it deflected, yeah. will they? That yeah, went over and it hit a young lady behind the Dallas Stars. This is going to be a penalty against the Stars for delay of game as Vernon Fiddler will go off. Vernon Fiddler puts this up and over. And it's going to strike a young lady right behind the Chicago bench. That never touches anything. That's up and over. And it's behind the Dallas Stars bench. Now Chicago back to the power play. Here comes Duncan Keith with a drive. Hit a leg in front. So the Hawks with a chance to tie now on the power play. Resulting in a And a pile up in the corner. And Jonathan Taves is slow to get to his feet as he took the worst of that collision. Taves remains in the play for Chicago. Sharp across to Keith. Looks it across to Kane. Back down to Taves. Shoots left from the save. And the rebound bounced away from Keith. Loose for Taves. Kane comes in to help. Golagoski cross checked down Taves. And Chicago is going to get a two-man advantage. Keith puts it on the stick of Cody Eakin. And the Chicago Blackhawks with a chance for a two-man advantage for at least a minute and 14 seconds. Veteran awareness by Duncan Keith. Smart, hard plays by Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves and Alex Goligoski. That's just too graphic on a star in the league. You can't do that. And earlier, remember, Jonathan Taves got way laid up high. Right? Here, Ooh, no call there against Trevor Daly. That's a high stick. You're going to do it twice in one sequence, you're going to get in trouble. Chicago's had two minutes and 23 seconds of five on three time this year. Hasn't scored yet. Hosa drops it down to Kane. Loose in front. Sharp couldn't pull the trigger. Trevor Daly hammers it off the glass. Gets a great bounce off his tension. And down the ice it goes. 40 to 15. The shot's on goal for Chicago. A five on three. Jonathan Taves winds his way in. Gets it to Kane. Now Taves stands in front. Here's Hosa across to Keith. Keith down to Sharp. Back to Keith. Cross he goes. Hosa drives. Lenton fights that off. Knocked down by Sharp. Plays it back to Kane. Walks back in front. Patrick Kane finds Sharp. Taps it back in front. Loose puck. Daly's down. So is Lenton. And Sharp throws it back in front, and Perry Lightning hauls that in as it bounces off the skate of Dillon. Do you call a timeout if you're Joel Quenville? 
just to settle things down, give your guys a rest score? Absolutely. I think I would too. You're down a goal, you're coming off that seven game trip, all kinds of action. And it is timeout oh, yeah, Chicago. That's, that's smart, I mean, that's what you do. You wait as long as you can, you call a timeout. Two shots on goal so far for Chicago on the power play. This will be as much about resting Hosa, Taves, Kane and company as it is about doing something strategic. The Blackhawks have taken their timeout. So Wednesday night rivalry is back on NBCSN tomorrow night. This week, no love lost between the Flyers and the Red Wings. It's Wednesday night rivalry, Philadelphia, Detroit. Coverage begins at 7 on NBCSN with NHL Live. Based on what's happened here the last five days between Dallas and Chicago, those two teams better get on Wednesday night rivalry. These franchises haven't met in the playoffs since 1991 when Minnesota was in the midst of that Cinderella run to the Stanley Cup final, which they ultimately lost to your Pittsburgh Penguins. But the old Minnesota North Star Dallas rivalry very much in evidence, and the Minnesota Wild have it heating up with Chicago as well. They'll play on Thursday in St. Paul. Faceoff was won by Cody Eakin, and Dylan gets the puck down the ice. It's a huge faceoff win for Cody Eakin of Dallas. Ten seconds to go in the Fiddler penalty. Keith drops it back for Jose. In across the line, he goes for Taves. Back to Keith. Fiddler's back on for Dallas. Kane sends it back door. That pass deflected away from Sharp. With a backdoor tap in. Now Eakin with a chance. Shorthanded. Here come the Stars. Busting in his Trevor Daly. Shoot. Oh, and a stop by Crawford. And there's going to be a penalty against Chicago. It'll be a tripping call against the Hawks. Marion Hosa goes off. And so the Chicago power play is over. Duncan Keith wasn't aware that somebody was coming in from behind Vernon Fiddler. Then Cody Eakin, smart play off to the races. Viddler's just going to get tripped down. But what a chance for the swift skating Trevor Daly. And Corey Crawford snags it out of the air. There's the trip to Hosa. Daly, the defenseman, in tight on Corey Crawford. Remember that save if Chicago comes back to win. Four on four now for 34 seconds. And then a Dallas power play, presuming no more penalties. So Dallas withstands a long Chicago power play, including... A long five on three for more than a minute. And Versteeg looks ahead for Seabrook. Back goes Gonchar for it. And Jordy Ben had the puck in the feet of Versteeg, now gets it back. And banks out ahead for Cole. Knocks it back in front for Peverly, but the play is offside at the Chicago line. 4-3, Dallas leads as Antoine Roussel puts the Stars ahead with a penalty shot goal here in Chicago. It has been an eventful night for 24-year-old Antoine Roussel. The Hawks wanted to settle a score from last Friday in Dallas when he hit Patrick Kane a couple of times. He's done even more to aggravate the Hawks tonight. And he, they're not the only ones. He has really made a name for himself as an annoying player. And you say that in the very best possible way from a Dallas perspective. Character matters, and he's got a lot of it. In comes Chicago, now two on one. Oduya throws that back in front off the skate of Sergey Gonchar. And that pass missed Ben Smith. Twelve and a half to go. The shots are 41-16 Chicago. But the Stars lead 4-3. Stars GM Jim Nill saying that the first period might have been Dallas's worst in the last eight games. They led 2-0. There's Chase on with it. Goes down to Whitney. Now a power play for Dallas with Jose in the box. And down low, Whitney throws that back in front. The pass missed Jordy Ben. And it's fired down the ice by Smith. Goligoski being harassed by Taves, got it there to Whitney. And Whitney goes rink wide for Cole. That pass in front too far for Eakin. And now Jordy Ben steps up the puck loose at the line, a battle for it. And Goligoski, after a treat to pick it up as Ray Whitney had lost his stick. 25 seconds to go in the Hosa penalty. Cody Eakin hooks that away from Seabrook, but the puck goes up and out of play.
Sergey Gonchar on the ice for Dallas. We mentioned he's a five-time Russian Olympian. His experience in Nagano embodies the Olympic spirit. Pierre in the Athletes' Village, he met a young Armenian figure skater, a Paris figure skater whose partner got hurt. Wasn't sure she could compete. He consoled her, and in the spirit of international cooperation, made her feel better. You know where she is now? No. In, in Dallas. She's <laughs> Mrs. Sergey Gonchar. <laughs> That's great. Here's Gonchar with it. Plays it across the Eakin on one knee. Hammers that wide. Ten seconds to go. The power play. A bouncing puck in front. Goes to Daly. And Oduya picks it out as Hosa steps out. Jalmerson looks ahead as Hosa was all alone at center ice hoping for the puck to come to him. Now Oduya bobbles it. But finds Smith who backs it out. And finds Kruger. And Roussel stepped in front of that. Those rink wine for Cole. Eric Cole trying to bounce that back in front of Hosa. Finds Sharp, drops it back to Taze. Jonathan Taze in across the line. In for Seabrook walking in. Brent Seabrook down low with it. Back in front for Sharp. Left in the save. The puck's loose in front. And they finally find it as Dylan knocks it out of the crease. Now Keith with a shot. That's blocked by Cole. That might have broken his stick. Scored the one player you're not seeing for Dallas. Ryan Garber, who blocked the shot in the first period. You can yeah. tell he's been injured, and they really miss his presence right now. Came back for a time, but not taking a regular shift now as Keith works his way in. Duncan Keith back in front of Chancellor. Sharp, he hammered that wide. Now Keith back with it. And Sharp can't hold the line as he plays it across. About the skate of Sharp, he lost it. And in come the Stars. Feeling back as he with a long shot and that found its way through and went just wide. Ben down to Nachushkin, throws it back in front. Eakin hammers that wide again. And the puck all the way down to the Dallas zone. Cody Eakin acquired from Dallas. And a trade that sent Mike Ribeiro to the Washington Capitol. Don Char back to pick it up for Dillon. And at the line, Johnny O'Dooley had a great play to keep it alive. To Kane, in, shoots, and Lightning with a blocker save on him. Down low now is Shaw. Feeds it back in front. Lebanon took that pass away from Saad, or he had a tap in. And Chicago just keeps coming at Dallas in waves as Gonchar picks up the loose puck. Jason ahead for Eakin. Moving in with Horkov, the centering pass, gloved down by Horkov, feeds it back in front. And Jalmerson collides there with Jason. Bad bounce off the stanchion, goes right to Horkov. Trying to drop it back in front, it rolls all the way down to Crawford. And he'll have to hang on to that. 44-16, to 16, the shot for Chicago, but Dallas leads 4-3. 30-year-old Kari Lettman has faced 44 shots that had allowed three goals. He's played once in the playoffs. In his 10 NHL seasons, that was 2007, played two games for the Atlanta Thrashers. But Pierre, he's never played for a real top 10 team. Gonchar shot off a leg and wide. Usually been up to him night in, night out to bail his team out. Agreed. Uh-oh. Look out, broken stick, and the puck goes to Gonchar. Had to be careful. Poor Canucks out there without a stick. And now the puck goes to him. And he gloves it ahead. The Stars can't leave the zone, and Kerber has it. Marcus Kerber working on Kanata, who finally gets a stick from a forward. As Fiddler gave him his. Loose behind the goal is Kruger. Throws it back in front, the puck rolls down to Lennon. will hang on to that, and late in the play, Brandon Bolling said bodies sprawling. And now Bolling and Roussel are talking, and Bolling's offering to drop his gloves. That's a little bit out of the weight category for Roussel. Vernon Fiddler is a smart player, Gord. He understands they're going to work down low, so he's trying to get the stick over to Kevin Cannot. But Ben Smith, number 28 in red, out of Boston College and Avon Old Farms, he's going to get a quality scoring chance right there for Marcus Kruger. And he just fans on him. You see the reaction of Ben Smith. Heady play, though, by Vernon Fiddler. Nice job. What a helpless feeling for Kevin Cannot with no one around. His stick just snapped in two. You're not taking the bait. You've given up on the sticks? I have to. What there, happened? Nobody uses wood anymore. What happened to you? <laughs> Who are you? 
Those are always money for that. Uh, now Goligoski down low for it. And Patrick Sharp played down to Hosa, and his stick was being held there by Goligoski. And that went undetected. And now wake up the stars as Eakin comes busting in around Seabrook. Cody Eakin in! And Crawford makes the save in tight on him. Two big saves by Crawford. Now Eakin with a shot that was off the stick of Ben, who shovels that back in front. Cody Eakin's having himself a night, too. Sharp works it on Goligoski, but Daly knocks that back down to Chicago zone. And Crawford out to play it. Drops it back to Seabrook. 7.40 to go in the third period. Hawks lead the league with five third period comeback wins this year. Brandon Saad it across the line. Works it out over seeing back in front for Saad. The loose puck in front knocked away by Jordy Ben. And in stride is Eric Cole busting in. Cole on Roosevelt. And Roosevelt just throws Cole down. Dylan back at the point. That long shot hit the leg of Nachushkin. And Verstig squeezes that by him and back at the center ice. Letty steps away from Cole. And away comes Letty with it. Walking in, fires! And Letton got a pat on that. Why is he playing well, Nick Letty? <laughs> now Kane on it. Bumped down there by Jeffrey. And the Chuskin has that go over his head, over the glass, and out with 6.39 to go in the third period. Gord, you talked about Cody Eakin having a big night, and you couldn't be more right. It's a yard sale in the neutral zone, and Brent Seabrook can't match the pace of Cody Eakin. And then we see a little bit more skill from the Chicago defense. Again, Nick Letty, who's already scored in this game, drives wide with speed and almost fools Kari Leighton. Well, we mentioned Pierre that Dallas is in the mix for a wild card spot in the Western Conference. If the Stars play Chicago, I'm in. I'm in. These guys play great games against each other. Jamie Van backhands that down, looking for Ray Whitney. Now will do you on it. Tough play in his backhand, and Whitney steps into him. Puck still loose down in the corner. Finally picked up by Oduya to Jomerson. Long lead pass for Shaw and across the line. In comes Andrew Shaw on Jordy Van. They collide hard in the corners. Shaw took the worst of that. And Ray Whitney tried to squeeze that by Keith. Nothing doing there. Kruger trying to pick it up. Under six to go in the third. Kruger centers it. Knocked down by Keith. Plays it across to Seabrook, his longtime D partner. Now picked up by Shaw for Kruger. Kruger back and up to Smith. He failed the shot. The puck to the line and out. That was a rolling puck to be fair to Ben Smith. Jumped right over his stick. Now Seabrook works his way in. Seabrook throws that back in front. Dylan knocks it away. It's Shaw down to Taves. Hawks are changing. Taves throws it back in front. The pass intercepted by Roussel. He's away with Peverly. And Roussel gets in front to Peverly. With Peverly batting at it. Crawford kicks that away. Fiddler throws it back in front and Crawford kicked it away. Sharp almost had that bounce right to him. And now it's loose in front for Fiddler. Intercepted by Hosa. And Duncan Keith ahead to Marion Hosa. Turns Trevor Daly and comes Hosa with a short side chance. Stopped by Lettman. And the Hawks creeping up on 50 shots on goal. 47-18 the count now. A centering pass. Great chance for Roosevelt. Kicked away by Lettman. And back come the Stars. They need a change as Roussel backhands that in deep. Michael Roosevelt, the latest Chicago Blackhawk, to be turned away. Letty. Plays out ahead for Saw. The pass in front, knocked away by Eakin. And Jordy Ben turns it over. Here's a chance for Peary on the backhand. Shot goes wide. Saad back down to the corner. Out comes Patrick King with a shot that goes off a of skate and wide. Loose puck in front. Saad can't pull the trigger. Chicago owning the puck here in the Dallas zone. Saad down to Kane. Plays it across to Roosevelt with a drive. That's blocked. And that's staggered Chase Saad who makes his way to the Dallas bench limping. No weight at all on his right leg either. Dallas paying the price here in the third period. Four to go. 48-18, the shot's on goal. Goligoski ahead for Cole. That pass misses, and that's a bad break for Dallas as the Stars have some tired players on the ice. Let's go inside the glass.
with Pierre Maguire. Bird, we have a 4-3 game right now, and Antoine Roussel probably wasn't very well known around the city of Chicago until tonight. Well, they'll know him now. Andrew Shawnee, a spirited battle. Bad turnover, which eventually leads to a Nick Letty power play goal. And then he comes in on a penalty shot, and this is probably not going to endear him to anybody in the city of Chicago or in Cook County. Off the face off, Bolin puts that wide. Bolin's had an eye on Roussel all night. And now it's knocked down by Kruger. Steps around Horkov. Kruger, nifty play off the back of the net. And the puck bounced away from Smith. Now he goes down to Kruger. Try to backhand that in front, and Goligoski leaves it there for Kanat. And back at the point, Keith can't hold it, and finally, Dallas can complete the chain. Now Taves with it, with some room to operate, and Dallas is changing. Taves gains center ice and flips that ahead. Back comes Goligoski for it. Taves takes that away from him. Kane playing with Taves and Sharp, no hosa. And they battle for it in the corner as Goligoski gives it to Taves. Got a penalty for it earlier. Now the puck loose behind the goal for Sharp. Banks it back to Kane. After Kane, crisscrossing with Keith, plays it across. Lots of traffic in front. Keith, rink winding goes for Zebra. Back to Keith, being harassed there by Nachushkin. And the puck stays in for Chicago for the moment, as finally Whitney knocks it out. Two and a half to go in the third period. Chicago rallied back from a 3-0 deficit at the time, the game at three. The penalty shot goal made it 4-3 Dallas. Here comes Hosa with Sharp. And Versteeg throws it back in front of Hosa. Pad save by Lutman. And now lifted down the ice by Roussel. And again, that won't help. An icing call goes against Dallas. And the faceoff back down to the Dallas zone. Watch live on a market games with NHL Game Center Live. One subscription lets you watch on your computer, smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. Visit NHL.com slash GCL. And wherever you're watching tonight, what a show you're getting. So Crawford's off for Chicago with 2.09 to go. The net empty. The extra skater on for the Hawks. And the next shot for Chicago will be the 50th. And the puck goes back to the point between Letty and Roosevelt. And here's Roosevelt with it. Throws it ahead for Saad. Knocked away by Fiddler. And Letty sets things up. Remember these teams last Friday played an 11 round shootout. In comes Versteeg with a long shot. That goes high. Back at the point to Letty. Into the corner for Versteeg. Back at right for Hosa. Taken away by Peverly. And Jordy Ben on his backhand couldn't play it out. Intercepted by Shaw. He gets thumped down there by Dillon. Versteeg digging for it. As Hosa plays it back in deep. Marion Hosa trying to throw that back in front. Dillon intercepts. And Roussel able to kick it ahead and back up to center ice. Brandon Dillon's had a really solid night for the Dallas Stars defensively. Now picked up by Shaw. Dallas completing a change as Shaw works his way in. Brings it around the wide side. A huge hit down there. He got thumped by Dillon. He's slow to get to his feet. Here comes Kane with it. Patrick Kane winds his way in. Across to Seabrook. Final minute now in the third period. Keith to Seabrook. Slaps it across to Kane. Three Hawks standing in front. Kane slaps it, goes off a leg and wide. Versteeg into the corner. Played back in front. And the puck to the line, but not out. Keith keeps it alive. Back down to Zebra. Shaw makes his way off. Kane comes in. Laid off the bench is Taves. Patrick Kane drops it back. Keith with the drive off the leg. Kane can't clear out the rebound. Now Kane with a chance, and it goes off a stick. And Flutter's back in behind the goal. They say the puck touched the mesh. It did not. Oh, man. The puck never touched the mesh, but play is called with 27.3 seconds left in the third period. What a break for Layden, and what a break for the fatigued Dallas Stars. Chicago's just all over them, Gord. It's been like that most of the night. 15, 18 are the shots. Puck comes in. Kane can't finish there. He overskates it. Here comes one block. Oh my Puck goes way up in the air. Nobody knows where it is, but it comes down before it touches the net. 
Then it taves in the head. Can you say coach's challenge? <laughs> Wouldn't matter in that situation anyways. The play would have been blown dead. So 50 to 18 of the shots. 27 seconds to go. Taves in for the faceoff against Fiddler. Wins it cleanly back to Keith. Being shadowed there by Horkoff. In for Sharp. Patrick Sharp throws it back in front of the basket by everyone. And a race for it to the line. Kept alive by Kane. And now Fiddler plays it out softly. Ten seconds to go in the third period. As Seabrook turns it back up the ice for Chicago. Five to go. Keith back in front for Seabrook. Backhands it back in front. And the Dallas Stars in a six-game losing streak against the Chicago Blackhawks. Riding the goaltending of Kari Leighton to a 4-3 win in Chicago. The final shots 50 to 18 in favor of Chicago. Let's take a look now at our K Jewelers go-to guy. Who else but Kari Leighton, who makes 47 saves, facing a career-high 50 shots as he steals one from the defending Stanley Cup champions in Chicago, handing them just their second regulation loss on home ice this year. Final score, Dallas 4, Chicago 3. Stand by for NHL Overtime presented by Bud Light after these messages.